Hi, I'm Dr. Messina. Today, we're going to be updating last week's video on the Omicron variant. If you recall, that variant had 30 mutations along its spike protein that were quite alarming because those mutations had the potential to change the way the virus enters our cells and to evade our protection from natural immunity from a previous infection evade our vaccine program and our monoclonal antibody program. A lot has been learned in the last two weeks. The reason it takes so long to really identify the severity of a new virus or a variant of an older virus is because viral illnesses tend to have a sequence they follow. You get exposed, you have an asymptomatic period, you have a prodrome where you don't feel right. You know something is wrong, but you just can't put your finger on it. Then you have the acute viral illness, then the recovery phase. And some viruses, such as the SARS-CoV-2 virus, tend to change as time progresses. So we found initially in early 2020 that patients could have done well during the first seven days of the viral illness and then started to become short of breath somewhere between day five and seven and between day seven and 10, make the turn to either a critical condition or a recovery. So we have to look at this new Omicron variant to see what that's going to do. The good news is, so far, it seems like the Omicron variant is giving a more mild disease with headaches, sore throat, sneezing and coughing, and general fatigue as the major symptoms. Which is not surprising because one of the mutations was very similar to a virus that prefers to stay in the bronchi, not progressing down to the lung, which is where all of the problem starts once you get the viral pneumonia. Negative side effects of these mutations are that the spike protein is mutated enough that our natural immunity has been evaded. So just because you've had a previous infection with SARS-CoV-2 virus and had COVID-19 doesn't mean you're immune from getting it again. We're finding a lot of patients are getting second and third infections of COVID. It also evaded our vaccine therapy to a certain degree. The Johnson & Johnson is no longer effective. If you've gotten only one dose of the Moderna or the Pfizer vaccinations, the mRNA variety, you have no protection. If you've gotten two doses, that rises to 25%. Three doses could bring you to 80% immunity. It also evaded two of our three monoclonal antibody therapies. So the Regeneron, which was a very popular therapy, is no longer effective. Instead, the GlaxoSmithKline monoclonal antibody therapy is still effective. However, because that wasn't a popular therapy, is in very short supply. Because the Omicron variant is giving a more mild course of a disease, is no reason for us to throw all caution to the wind. Patients who do get the Omicron viral illness are going to feel sick. They are going to present to the emergency room for care and walk-in clinics for care, displacing other medical necessities. So it has the potential to overrun our hospital systems, be it they might not overrun the intensive care unit, but the hospital system in general. And currently, the most critical patients from Omicron are the young and the very old. So we have a lot of good news this week and some bad news, and I'm sure it's going to change in the weeks to come. Take care, be safe, take reasonable precautions, and have a good new year. Here he is, everybody. And here we go. Here we go, the new member of the family. We call this the hairy variant. Ooh, the hairy variant. Does he have four spikes or five with the tail? He's got five spikes with his paws and his tail. <laughs> Hello.
No one's safe from the Hava Snoot variant. No. <laughs> All right, yeah, take him up with this one. <laughs>